You come from a very unique position because you're a former uh, general secretary of New Peng. Yeah. You are the current chairman of the House Committee on Petroleum Resources Downstream. Yeah. You have been in this sector uh, for decades now. Yeah. And so I want to ask you, when you look at the fuel crisis in the country today, uh, what are your thoughts on it in terms of the trajectory of from where we were coming from, say, uh, from, say, 20, 2010, we saw what happened with the subsidy uh, scandal, if you will. We saw what is now happening with the, uh, the proliferation of fuel products across borders, et cetera, et cetera. What are your thoughts on government's action in this regard, and what do you think needs to be done to correct what's going on right now? What should be done, and what has always been the problem, is problem of supply, inadequate supply. And how will this take place? It is re local refinery. It's inadequate. We, between 1965, like you rightly said, I've been 40 years in the industry. Between 1965 and 1981, 16 years, we had four refineries. And between 1981 and today, about 30 something years, we did not add one refinery. Yet we are growing in vehicular and human population. What do you think will happen? It's a deliberate confusion that is introduced to exploit the situation by whoever benefit from such conflict. But honorable member, is that not an indictment on your party that was in power from 1999 to 2015 in terms of the billions that were paid on turnaround maintenance on the refineries that are now not working? It's not about uh, this thing. It's about government and policy and implementation of policy. Even the, the government that have taken over have not done anything in that regard. So, and the question is why? Why are we having this problem? Why is it a perennial problem, whether it is a traditional government or a corrective government? Why? Mm. You don't see that also the problems could lie with the unions, because we see that there is a certain fear of some sort. Anytime the word privatization is mentioned, you know, especially with the refineries, uh, we have seen that in many instances when government, you know, government-run facilities or government-run companies are not run for profit, or in many instances, they're not run as they ought to be run, even, even if they were not for profit. They shouldn't run at a loss, especially for something that you know, Nigerians need. Do you think that uh, the unions have also been a sort of cog in the wheel in, in, in making progress in, in these areas? Well, any organization is a product of the society within which it evolves. Agitation tries where there is widespread suffering. The union capitalizes on the suffering of the people in order to come together. In this country, you know, unions are very strong. Have you seen as a normal thing when judges form union, medical doctors form union, everybody from Pepe Sela form union? Why? It is because not nobody, no Nigerian, have a right as of right. Your right is a function of your power or your influence. So the way the society is organized is what makes the union to be strong. Uh, to, to be strong. Now, the same society, is it the same union alone, that when the government says, let us deregulate, and you see Nigeria shut down? Nigerians themselves, apart from the union, if the union call for boycott and a strike, and the society does not respond, the union will back, will, will, will back better or will back down. But, but the society think? themselves do not want, okay, they say, let us deregulate the oil industry, for example, so that let it flow, let profit, uh, privatization of uh, uh, principle of supply and demand, the uh, uh, forces of supply and demand take over. And you see Nigerian reacting. The same Nigerian that will go and buy the fuel at 250 naira per liter, and their driver will be sucking uh, the thing with their mouth to the tank, and injecting, ingesting lead, which is contained in PMS. So, it's the society. Uh, it's not uh, about the union. I'm just it's wondering. It's not about the union alone. Just, Let me say just, alone. just wondering, do you think that privatization really is the way out? Privatization and deregulation. Is it really the way out for us? Because the unions also make very, very strong arguments in, in those areas that we have been brainwashed into thinking that privatization and deregulation is the only way to go. They believe that government can really work if it really needs to work and get things done as it ought to. Yes, uh, I am of that uh, school of thought too, that even government can make things work. 
But why I believe this? Is it not the same man 